to John 9, John 9 from verses 1 to 3, John 9 from verse 1 to 3. I'm reading the New King James Version. It says, now as Jesus passed by, he saw a man who was blind from birth. Verse 2, and his disciples asked him, saying, Rabbi, who sinned? This man or his parents, that he was born blind. Verse 3, Jesus answered, neither this man nor his parents sinned, but that the works of God should be revealed in him. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to submit to you that sometimes we are in certain states in our life, not because of something we did, but because God wants to get the glory. We go through certain things because God wants to use our story to show the world that he's still God. He wants to be introduced as the God of Pastor Colette. He wants to be introduced as the God of Minister Shile Belo. He wants to use your story to show his glory. Jesus said, it wasn't this man, it wasn't him, it wasn't his father, it was nothing to do with him. God just wants to get the glory. Scripture reminds me about Lazarus when he had passed away and they went to tell Jesus. They said, Jesus, Lazarus is dead. And he turned to the disciples and smiled. I am happy that happened. I'm sure the disciples would have looked at him. What do you mean? He says, no, I'm happy you saw that because I want you to experience something. I've spoken to you about this thing, but there's an experience I want to give you that later on, when you see things like this, you'll be able to call situations that are dead and call them forth. I begin to call right now. There's someone here, you've been applying for jobs, maybe you're online, and it seems like every application is dead on arrival. God says it's coming alive in the name of Jesus. So sometimes we are left in states like this because of divine providence. Number two, what keeps us in states like this that we are needing recovery. Luke 5 verses 17 to 20. Sometimes it's something we did. Sometimes it's something we did. In Luke 5, verse 17 to 20, it says, Now it happened on a certain day, as he was teaching, that there were Pharisees and teachers of the law, sitting by who had come out of every town of Galilee, Judea, and Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was present to heal. I'm going to pause there for a minute. And the power of the Lord was present to heal them. There were people surrounding Jesus, not realizing that there was a power in the house to heal. Can I speak to someone's life today? you will not miss the power of God in the mighty name of Jesus. When the power is moving, you will not miss it in the name of Jesus. It says, and the power was present to heal them. It says, then behold, men brought a, a man on a bed who was paralyzed, whom they sought to bring in and lay before him. And when they could find <laughs> no way that they might bring him to him, they had to open the ceiling and lower this guy. Verse 20 says, when he saw their fate, he said to him, man, your sins are forgiven. The first way sometimes we're needing recovery is because it's divine providence. There's nothing you did, nothing that you can change. Sometimes it's because of what you did. In this man's case, scripture lets us know that he had a sin problem. I want to pray for someone here. I don't know what you've caused to cause pain to yourself. <laughs> But the one who owns the earth, your creator, the one who's able to reset and refresh, he's resetting you today in the name of Jesus. Scripture lets me know that even the lawful captive would be set free. I speak to that person with that court case. You might have been found guilty, but there is someone who's standing in the place for you and you're going free in the name of Jesus. Sometimes, it's because of something we did. Number three, what are things that leave us needing recovery? So we said it's sometimes divine providence. Sometimes it's what we did. Other times it's because of something someone did. Tell somebody, someone did it. Someone did it. Someone did it. It wasn't me. It was, it was somebody. Yes. Yeah. This is the sweetest one to blame someone. It's not me. It's 2 Samuel 4 verse 4. Jonathan, Saul's son, had a son who was lame in his feet. 
He was five years old when the news about Saul and Jonathan came from Jezreel. And his nurse took him up and fled. And it happened as he made haste to flee that he fell and became lame. His name was Mephibosheth. This guy had nothing to do with the condition he found himself in. Someone was picking him up to flee and he found himself in a predicament. You know, you and I were stuck in a pandemic for two and a half years. Not, we didn't eat bat. Nobody ate bat here, right? And nobody, none of us installed that 5G satellite, right? No. And no, no. <laughs> But we were in a pandemic, not because of what we did, but because of something someone else did. Scripture lets me know about Israel, about a time where God wanted to punish the sons of Eli. And Israel was going to battle and they lost 30,000 men, not because of what they did, but because God wanted to punish two people. May you be delivered from every error that you don't have part in, in the mighty name of Jesus. Even the ones you have part in, God is delivering you in the mighty name of Jesus. You will not be a victim of of someone else's accident in the mighty name of Jesus. Your children will not be victims of someone else's accident in the name of Jesus. Sorry, P. Well has quenched the fire. So sometimes it's because of divine providence. Sometimes it's because of something you did. Sometimes it's because of something someone else did. I love the story of Mephibosheth because it did not end there. When you go down to 2 Samuel 9 from verse 1 to 7, it says, Now David said, Is there still anyone left in the house of Saul that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? Verse 2 says, And there was a servant of the house of Saul whose name was Ziba. So when they called him to David, the king said to him, Are you Ziba? And he said, At your service. Then the king said, Is there not someone of the house of Saul to whom I may show the kindness of God. And Ziba said to the king, there is still a son of Jonathan who lays lame to his feet. Listen, may God send you Zibas in the name of Jesus. People who will speak on your behalf. You see that guy could have just said, oh, there's nobody that's, I at least used to work in his house. I can. But he said, no, there is still one person. May God locate your helpers of destiny in the mighty name of Jesus. When we read that story down, we see how God, uh, uh, how David was able to restore uh, uh, Mephibosheth to his table. He said, and all the days of his life, he ate at the king's table. So first way, sometimes that we're left needing recovery is by divine providence. Sometimes it's because of what we did. Sometimes it's because of something someone else did. And the one I hate the most is the last one, where sometimes we're left needing recovery because because of a deliberate attack from the enemy. Turn with me to 1 Samuel 30, from verses 1 to 6. I'm reading the New King James Version. 1 Samuel 30, verses 1 to 6, the New King James Version. It says, Now it happened when David and his men came to Ziglag, on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziklag, attacked Ziklag and burned it with fire and had taken captive the women and those who were there from small to great. They did not kill anyone but carried them away and went their way. I want to speak to someone's life. There's nothing you've lost that's dead. God is restoring it tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. He says, so David and his men came to the city and there it was burned with fire and their wives, their sons and their daughters had been taken captive. Go down. Next verse. <laughs> and David's two wife, Ahinoam, the Jesuit, and Abigail, the widow of Nabal, the Carmelite, had been taken captive. Verse 6. It says, Now David was greatly distressed, for the people spoke of stoning him, because the soul of all the people was grieved, and every man for his sons and daughters. But David. Somebody say, but David. David strengthening himself in the Lord. I'm going to pause here for a minute. 
There are times where in states that we need recovery because of divine providence. There are times it's because of something we did. There are times it's because of something someone else did. And there are times where the enemy 